Let's get into the weeds here of the Trent Williams situation. I don't know if you followed uh, these last oh, few yeah. days as the story has unfolded. It's been interesting. I was kind of buying into this whole disgruntled, and I'm sure he is, with the training staff and maybe doesn't feel like they care about him maybe as much as he's cared about the team over the last several years. Uh, I get that. Distrust of Bruce Allen, I'm right there with him. Yeah. Um, but then when I read yesterday, Les Carpenter, your report, so he asked for a trade June 1. I'll buy that. But then when they turned him down immediately, I'll buy that. He then said, well, then I want more money. That makes mm-hmm. me think his stance is a little less principled than what I may have thought. Well, I, I, this morning I thought hit the nail on the head because he went through the entire, uh, you know, what happened Timeline. and how he was upset a year ago when they drafted a tackle in the third round. And, and, and when you are, particularly when you're a football player, and when you've had the injuries that Williams has had, he's 31 years old now, and, and linemen do tend to have longer careers if they stay healthy uh, than, than you know, running backs, for example. But he's looking at the fact that the last year of his contract isn't guaranteed. This year is. Next year's not. Uh, he's 31. He will be 32 a year from now, obviously. Even I can do that math. And saying, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have given my all to this franchise, and I do want more money. Now, you know, we all go back and forth on this issue. If you have a contract, you have a contract. You know, I would never say to somebody if I, in a different profession, but if I had a contract to write a book for a certain amount of money and then I sensed that the book was going to, you know, do better than we had thought when I initially signed the contract, I don't go back in and say I want to rewrite the contract. Mm -hmm. You know, but, but but the other side is that I'm not like an athlete. Uh, Trent Williams is going to be done in football in the next five, six years if, if everything goes well, so I can understand his feeling that way. I think, again, going back to Jerry's column, that it's, it's all the things you mentioned, Eric. I think it is all those things that have happened, but I also think it, it's money. Well, no, it's always about money. Right, right. Well, I was hoping it was maybe a little bit more principled. Um, well, but I think there is, I don't know if principle is the right word, but I think there are other issues involved. It's not just the no money. No doubt it's complex. But the other issues probably made him start to think more about the money. That, right. That's what I think. Right. Um, beyond that, do you have any, uh, you haven't been out to camp, right? That's not something you oh, do. Oh, God. That's not something you do. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. You know, the last time I was at, at, at Washington training camp, they were in Carlisle. <laughs> okay. Right. And right. I think Sonny Jurgensen might have been the quarterback. Right. No, but when I'm you exaggerating, your, but only by a little. When you wrote your Ravens book, you obviously were yeah. there for Ravens yes. training camp. What were your biggest takeaways back then? Because for the Redskins training camp, the big stories obviously are the Trent Williams holdout, but also the quarterback competition. Right. But you almost wonder what can you learn in, in, in the practice against you know, your own players and, and in limited preseason work. You know, I, I, I always thought that, that all of the stories, and look, people want to read about their teams uh, regardless of, of what, which of the 32 NFL cities you're in. But I remember going to OTAs in, in Baltimore when I was starting the research on the book, and I remember one morning Kyle Bowler threw two interceptions. And I swear to God there was absolute panic among the media. You know, oh, my God, he threw two interceptions. He, uh, he can't possibly start. He can't possibly lead a team. And, of course, he didn't turn out to be a great quarterback, as we know. But the, the way people react, mm-hmm. and I, I include the media in this, um, to, to what happens in training camp. You know, for example, if Trent Williams showed up at training camp on August, August 15th, I mean, camp might be over then, but if he showed up with a team two weeks before the season started, do you think he wouldn't be ready to go on opening day? Of course he would be. I, I mean, guys do that all the time, and, and you know, like God, somebody holds out for three days or something. Oh, my God, what's going to happen if he's not in camp by tomorrow? It, it's all overrated, and, and I don't even know why they have OTAs. The, the OTAs and, and, and mini camps, whatever, should really be limited to rookies and, and guys who uh, are trying to make the team. Yeah, I mean, Tom Brady need, needs OTAs. Are you kidding me? Now, Dwayne Haskins, okay, fine. Get, you know, get him in there, get the reps, see how he looks, see what he needs to work on. That's different. 